Welcome, Yakima Marga. Thank you so much for that very enlightening talk. Thanks. I'm glad you like it. Uh, so you, you did such a great job of it, I thought, that you actually made it a little hard for me to create questions to uh, follow up with. But I've tried my best, and I've tried to follow roughly the flow of the talk. But please jump in at any time for any of these questions. So first of all is kind of zooming out a little bit. Um, EBPF has been in the news a lot over the last couple of years, and everyone's very excited about it. But maybe you could tell us in your own words why it's exciting for you and what problems it's helping you to solve with Inspector Gadget. Right. So one of the super cool things of EBPF is that it gives us the opportunity of looking into what's going on with our pods or, well, pods in the Kubernetes uh, context, in other contexts, it might be processes in general. Uh, it gives us ways to look into what's going on that we didn't have before because we have lots of trace points into the kernel that we can use. And with new kernel versions, we get new and exciting features uh, that we can experiment with. Uh, it also has the disadvantage that then you need to have a very new kernel to experiment with these features. But uh, it really looks like in the next couple of years, this will be exploding with opportunities to look into what's going on with our workloads that we didn't have before. So yeah, that's why we are so excited about this. Thanks. And um, one of the things that stood out for me is the work that you specifically did in Inspector Gadget of being able to go to move away from PIDs and to be able to specify specific pods that you wanted to be able to um, uh, focus on. Like, yeah. How long did that take? What were the stumbling <laughs> blocks in the way? Oh, well, so... Actually, Inspector Gadget has existed for a couple of years now. Uh, we just haven't, uh, I think we haven't done a great job of communicating how cool it is. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, I guess the idea is is the, the magic part. It's not so much as how long the code took, but it was like how we came up with this idea of how uh, how to match the the meta information, the Kubernetes information to the processes, which uses the mount namespace. And yeah, and then apply that to all of the eBPF programs that are out there. Uh, yeah, so I wouldn't like, I wouldn't measure it in how long it took, but as I said, like this has existed now for a while, which is, I think we haven't made such a good <laughs> communication strategy, but we are trying to, um, fix that now. It's been in an unintentional stealth mode, but we're yeah. very glad to have it out now. Um, so one more question on Inspector Gadget, and then I'm going to jump to Headlamp. Um, what specific challenges were you trying to overcome when you thought, okay, because eBPF was already there. At what point did you think, right, we're going to build a tool for this to make it easier? Well, so the basically the VCC tools are... are super useful and we we were seeing how many people were trying to use them and in order to use them in the kubernetes context you need to manually do a bunch of stuff and we saw different people going through those manual steps and it felt like this is something that can be automated that can be done better and uh, basically it was trying to help users uh, get the power of VCC tools in their Kubernetes clusters. And once we had that, we realized we can also like improve it even more by adding our own gadgets that are not just based on the VCC tools. So we have now this, like the two streams of like the VCC gadgets and the gadgets that we created specifically for Inspector Gadget. Great. Thanks, Margaret. So I'm going to jump over to Yakim now and talk a little bit about Headlamp. Um, that was the second tool demoed during the talk. Uh, new web UI for Kubernetes also works in cluster on the desktop. You mentioned that it's agnostic. I think in the demo, we saw it working on Minikube and Locomotive. Like, Where else are you seeing this being used right now? Yeah, so we maintain a list of the platforms uh, that we've tested it with. Uh, that said, the part about it being agnostic is about 
the fact that it should run pretty much on, on any Kubernetes cluster because it doesn't need any control plane uh, or anything running. It uses the, the Kubernetes API, so that's why we mention it like that. Got it. And you touched on one of the functionalities that I thought was pretty cool, which is plugins. Now, obviously there was the rejects plugin, which was a lot of fun. Very useful. And we also saw some of the plugins around. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> especially during this. Uh, we also saw the inspector gadget plugin. Um, what other sorts of plugins are available right now? And I think we can talk about the future um, later on. Yeah. So we've uh, focused on inspector gadget uh, because, um, you know, it was, uh, so headlamp was originally, uh, the concept was originally developed for um, our own uh, Kubernetes uh, flavor. Uh, and uh, so one of the things we wanted to offer was uh, this functionality powered by, by Inspector Gadget. Uh, so we have the Network Policy Advisor plugin and we have the what we call the Trace Loops plugin. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, so a lot of it is about making sure that uh, we have the capability from Inspector Gadget, but done in a, in a simple uh, way. So, uh, so you don't have to, re to remember even, uh, you know, the, what, what you need to set up in the, in the custom resources. Uh, you just have to go and press a button. So that's, uh, yeah, that's, that, uh, that means that we have more uh, plugins about uh, Inspector Gadget, but we do have uh, so another one that is uh, actually very simple, but it's uh, it's about showing a link to uh, the um, the Grafana um, application. So if Grafana is running, uh, there will be a link on top that you can link to it because we do show some of uh, some charts, but it's not our our idea to like replace any any advanced functionality for for monitoring like Grafana. So instead we integrate tools like that by just having a bridge to them so so, so to say that's uh that's at least uh you know what we have so far uh yeah so that's an excellent segue to the question i had that i think it's probably aimed at both of you but um kind of coming in through inspector gadgets so as with all things kubernetes inspector gadget is just one piece of a melange of tooling um I can understand how, you know, that I, I love the headlamp analogy, right? Like we're going into the dark. How do we figure out what's actually happening down there? And I can see through some of the things that you showed in the demo, how we could use this to inspect um, what's happening live. But then there was one example in there about creating set comp profiles or policies, which mm -hmm. made me think that maybe this is the kind of thing that might belong in a software development lifecycle or continuous delivery uh, pipeline where maybe you go generate those from live traffic and then apply them so that it can be shared anywhere else. Is that yeah. the case? And if so, are there more examples of um, sort of less live and more proactive uses of this tooling? Right, yeah. So we kind of have uh, two groups of gadgets. Uh, there are like the advisors and the analyzers. And so we have the second policy advisor that I mentioned in the talk, and we also have the network policy advisor, which uh, similarly to what SecCom does, it looks at the network traffic between pods and after capturing this traffic for a while, suggests a network policy that you could apply for those pods of like which pod should be able to communicate with, with which other pod. And we have other ideas that we haven't implemented yet, but uh, of creating a capabilities advisor and other similar stuff like that of uh, looking at what's going on in the cluster. And as you say, like in a development stage, in a CI stage, checking what is the expected traffic, what are the expected syscalls, what are the expected capabilities that you would need to have in the cluster. And then when you put it in production, use that information to make sure that your cluster is correctly contained. Um, so yeah, so those are more like not for, for debugging, but for like making sure that your cluster is correctly set up. Fantastic, thank you. Sorry, jump in. Yeah, and uh, also I would like to say firsthand news that we uh, have we're working now on the second policy uh, advisor plugin, so uh, so you know so in order to make it easy um, for users, they can just go there, start getting. And the idea with the set comp 
for a uh, plugin for headlamp would be that you could live see which capabilities are being used by a given pod. Yes. So, so the idea is that you can start a recording the, the, the capability, well, the, the, the calls going on, and then it gets you a sec comp policy profile and you, and you can apply them or not. And this is done, uh, you know, uh, in a, in a way that the users don't, again, don't have to remember, um, uh, exactly how to how to do that in inspector gadget can they can just press a button they start recording and basically uh, get the you know get the policy and then choose to apply it or not list the policies that are applied and all that um you know one of, one of the of course of the goals is always like that that we try to take care of is uh how to um you know how to present this Spectre gadget functionality, but not just in a way that this is simply a UI for you to press a button instead of writing in a command line, but rather how how can we integrate it in a more in a higher level, right? So, for example, if you if you have uh, second policies that you didn't apply, maybe there is something that shows up in the in the uh, in the notification saying, oh, you have this. Uh, you know, but you haven't applied it. You want to to apply it, so all, all sort of all that sort of uh, of functionality is something that we really want to to right. integrate. Uh, but of course, you know, we have uh, we've been focused on our own use cases. Uh, but the idea is that the more people start using the, the 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 plugins and they create more plugins, the more functionality we we need to cover. Uh, so you know, that's. Thank you very much. So that did a very good job of answering um, the last question uh, for the headlamp side, which is what's next. Um, Margo, you mentioned for Inspector Gadget that there's going to be extensions to the CRD. Uh, any more clues you can give us there? Well, I mean, I think right now our focus is in uh, making it easy to integrate with other tools. And so, for example, with uh, the CRD way right now, we don't have an easy way of getting um, streaming data. So for example, if you run XXNoop, uh, it's a streaming uh, tool that keeps giving you information. And uh, right now it's a little bit clunky. So we want to work on making it uh, easy to integrate with Inspector Gadget in any kind of tool like Headlamp or any other UI. And if you have like something that is giving you streaming data, you you can like subscribe to it and get it in a in an elegant way. Excellent, thank you. So unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. Uh, I think I could talk about this all day long, and I will be tuning in for the talk live. Um, Margaret Yakim, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Thanks to Microsoft Azure and Equinix Metal for supporting us at the champion level. We also want to thank Red Hat and Slim.ai for funding us at our supporter level.